Yeah, you can call now. Actually, write the number down or keep it committed to memory, whatever, because we are going to have more with the Brain Trust answering your money questions next hour. A whole other hour is just ahead. Now, here's a reminder. You can find us online at boomersbraintrust.com, boomersbraintrust.com. If you missed any of our uh, past programs, of course, the podcast is there. You can subscribe to the show and the podcast. Audio, video, on demand. You can watch us in action right here at the Anchor Desk. You can hear and see it at boomersbraintrust.com. All right, so now I don't know about you, Diana. I'm, I, I'm generally the type of person who drives their car just until it falls apart on the side of the road. Like the Bluesmobile, remember? At the end of the Blues Brothers, you get <laughs> yes. out, you close the door, and it's just Whoosh. in pieces. Yep. That's me. Uh, we know, of course, that with proper maintenance, though, the large investment that we made in our cars should provide us with a very nice return. But naturally, even with good maintenance records, repairs on our cars are almost always necessary at some point. Uh, but there comes a time, I think, in the course of car ownership where we have to decide whether it's worth it to repair the 82 Cadillac Cimarron that's coughing up blood in the garage, <laughs> or did you ever own one of those? Oh. No, thank God. Is it no. Pam knows. Or is it better from a financial standpoint to wise up and buy a new or newer, newer model car? So I guess where do you go for unbiased and knowledgeable advice on this? You're here already, Pam Oaks, our car care expert. We've got her here on the Boomer's Lifeline to talk about this rather big decision. Pam's the National Automotive Authority. She's an ASC certified technician, owner of Pam's Motor City, and author of Car Care for the Clueless, which I think includes just about everyone right here in the studio. And I'll put my hand up first. Pam, hey, thanks for being back with us. It's always fun to have you. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, that Cimarron, that was a uh, Whoa. Cavalier in disguise. Was it though? <laughs> right. Yep. And I wondered I if the... I remember working on those. Oh, oh you, you, yeah. I mean, that's all. That's probably all you saw back then was nothing but Cimarron sitting in there, which I think the Cavalier was a vague in disguise. I have no idea. Uh, but anyway. Oh, second that. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Look it up as if you don't know. It's an awful car. Uh, I, I knew you'd know about that. I, I, I think I can safely say, Pam, that I know less about cars than even the average person out there, which, by the way, uh, isn't saying a whole lot about me. Uh, and my intellect. But, you know, when I, when I hear a strange noise in my car, my first method of dealing with it is to turn up the radio until the noise is gone. But uh, unless the repairs are going to require a few thousand dollars, I always lean toward fixing the old one instead of buying something new. Now, first of all, am I in the minority of car owners or the majority? Would they rather repair or just get rid of it? No, actually, we're in the repair mode right now because the average age of the vehicle on today's roads is over 11 years old. Hmm. Wow. That's, 11 years old? 11 years old. That's amazing. I finally turned mine in after 15 years on the road, and I, I wish I had thought about this a little more. I mean, I was ready. I probably was ready earlier, but is there some kind of rule of thumb uh, that people can use when uh, determining whether repairs just aren't worth the cost any longer? I can tell you when it's time to trade her in is when you have fallen out of love with your car. <laughs> Seriously. Really? You know, you go out there and you look at the car and say, I hate that car. I really don't like this car anymore. <laughs> and here, but when you do this, you have this mindset. Because when you hear that little rattle, you hear that squeak, it's time for the maintenance, you're less likely to do something about it. And that's when the car goes into disrepair. When it goes into disrepair, that's when you start getting the big repair bill. Yeah, and I guess does that come from just people going a certain amount of time and ignoring it? I, I mean, again, I don't do a lot to my car. Uh, I've got like a ten-year-old Acura, but and I haven't done much to it. Just, just, just little brief periods of maintenance here and there, and it seems to be doing just fine. But I, I, I guess the question is, when you when you say fall out of love with a car, you mean you just you you've you've never liked it, or it's just it's got too many rattles and too many problems, and you can't get parts for it anymore? Well, you know. Uh we're a fickle society, <laughs> and that yeah. includes our cars. And when I'm talking about, you know, you loved it when you purchased it, but it's getting older and times have changed, and uh, maybe, uh, you know, it reminds you something that you've done in the past, you know, an ex or something like that. Or it could even be to the point that you uh, have grown a family, and it's a larger family, and that four-door sedan is not going to fit four kids in it comfortably with, uh, you know, your spouse. 
Well, I knew that was true for me, Pam, because when I was driving the living room on wheels and realized I was the only one in it most of the time, I knew yeah. it was time to get yeah, a new Yeah, me car. too. Yeah, what am I doing way back here in this bus? Exactly. Yeah. So, Pam, uh, in your experience, do you think uh, mechanics are a little more inclined to uh, steer their customers toward repairs, especially if you've been a longtime customer? Or are they going to give it to you straight and say, you know what, it's just time to give up the ghost? Well, you know, it really depends upon the relationship you have with your AC Blue Seal Shopper, you know, technician. Uh, most are going to be 100% straightforward, say, repairs are going to exceed the value of the car. They're going to exceed the amount of money you would be paying out in car payments, and it's time to let Betsy go to the junkyard. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of them, though, We'll go on the other hand, I really don't want to lose this customer because unfortunately when people go to the dealership, the dealerships are now incorporating service contracts and extended warranties to keep you at the dealership. And they want to do that because they're not making money off of the car sale. They're making money off of the maintenance, the repairs, and the parts oh, they're going to use to repair yeah. your vehicle. Boy, they are indeed. Now, now, I, I wonder if some people are just afraid to bring their cars into a mechanic because they, they, they don't want to know what huge things might be wrong with with the car. Do you think that car repairs are not as costly, though, as people might imagine them to be? I know you've, you've of course, repaired hundreds and thousands of them. Well, they're not like they used to be. Cars, believe it or not, with all the plastic in them, they are made a lot better than they were 25, 35 years ago. They're more stout. So the repair bills, unfortunately, they're going to reflect the technology in the cars. You're going to be paying to repair those heated seats. You're going to be paying, oh, yeah. <laughs> paying for you know all these luxury items that we have now incorporated into the car. You're going to be paying to fix that nav system on the dash. Mm -hmm. And that's where the big bucks come into play. So, so I guess what, the, 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 the parts tend to last longer, the cars tend to last longer, but when something goes wrong, it's generally going to cost you a whole lot more. Exactly. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Hey, uh, Pam, we're about out of time. Uh, if, if people, you, 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 if, if they want more information on car care for the clues, I actually have to pick that up. I was going to do it last time I didn't. If they want to pick that up, how can they do that? Uh, they actually can go to our website, carecarefortheclueless.com. We have a click-through link. Uh, it's at Barnes & Noble. We also have it on Amazon.com. Okay, it's great. It's there to make you a savvy car consumer. Pam, hey, thanks very much. Pam Oaks joins us every so often talking about car care. We appreciate you. Have, we'll have you on again, Pam. Thanks. Uh, okay. I, I, yeah, I'm I'm one of those people. Maybe it's because my my dad couldn't work on cars. His dad uh. couldn't work on cars. I mean, this is going back to the you know early 17th century, <laughs> and they were afraid to you know repair the buggy or whatever it was. It's just it's been passed along to me. So yeah. I always leave it up to the experts, which is what we do on this program. We get expert advice for you, and we try to have answers. And speaking of answers, by the way, we got money answers with Professor Plum, who's going to be back again next hour. We got a whole lot more to talk about in another hour of the Boomer's Brain Trust program, which begins in just a couple of seconds. Stick around, Johnny Dean and Dinah Smith.